three, four. Bonus features. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 45 of Bonus Features with Alex and Robert. I'm Robert. And I'm Alex. So we start off with our pointless interlude of sports. Whether or not it'll be two minutes, I can't promise that. So let's just go and find out. (laughs) uh, That's going to have to depend on how long I want to talk about that absolute war between Israel Adesanya and Kelvin Gastelum. Oh, yeah. That was a a fight, fight, right? That might have been the fight of the year. He's my most. Uh, he's the most exciting fighter, to, up and coming fighter to watch, in my opinion. You know what I like too is he's one of those guys where everyone was saying, "Well, what about his grappling?" You know, because mm-hmm. he, he hadn't been seriously tested or, or like tried a lot of offense just yet at grappling, at least not that I've seen. Mm-hmm. Like he's primarily a striker, obviously, but he showed some stuff. He attempted a triangle here and there. Yeah, not successful, but like, hey, he's working at it, mm-hmm. and. Well, it's actually weird because Kevin Gastelum shot in the fourth round, and a lot of people are saying he should have just kept up with the striking game, and then maybe once he landed a big shot, then try and take him down. Right. You know, uh, it was kind of a poor shot. I don't know. It's like I I can understand how that's like maybe where he was going because that's what like Matt Sarah was talking about that. Mm-hmm. It's like the idea is you know you take him down, and then beat the crap out of him, whatever, get the finish there. Mm. I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter. It was still a all-out war. You, when you got a fight where both fighters knock each other down, that's usually going to be a, a nutso fight. Oh, yeah. He's and then the, the Poirier one was, it was okay. Yeah, I didn't catch that one. I mean, I just it, saw it was headliner. also a good fight, but it's just like, in comparison, man. You, you know what I mean? It's like watching anyone who had to go on stage after Hendrix. Mm-hmm. You know, you just sit there. You know what? After that, I just think everything's going to suck in comparison. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Which is totally unfair because that was also a good fight. Mm. And now that's weird, too, because I was saying Gaethje Poirier. Well, no, I think Poirier's getting titles shot. Or I don't fucking know. That that division is just crazy right now. Yeah, that's weird. I would. My guess would be Poirier. I think he's getting the title shot. I can't remember. Poirier Gaethje? No, Poirier, uh, what's it called? Uh, Khabib. Oh, yeah. He's coming out, man. There's some shit like that. Coming out of exile. Well, that's the thing, is I think he, his suspension is up, I think, in July. Oh, fuck, I don't remember. I know that like they wouldn't be fighting till around the later half of the year anyway. Okay. That, that'd be my guess. Hmm. But whatever. Uh, what's going on in baseball? Uh, baseball's good. We're better now. The Cubs are better. Are they? Uh, yeah, they've been they've been playing a lot better. They're still below five hundred, but they're only eight and nine. Oh, okay, that's good because the last time I checked in, they were five and nine. Yeah, no, it's better now. Uh, Wilson Contreras and my my guy Jason Hayward are on a war path. They're both hitting very well. Hayward, of course, uh, in particular, living up to that contract that everybody in Chicago likes to razz him for. Yeah. But, I always like Jason Hayward, man. <laughs> I do too. He gave the pep talk during the rain. That's what they say, and I. That's what everybody says. We they still interacted don't know. it with. They reenacted it with Legos. It happened, brah. They did. Yeah. What didn't. was this in? I don't know. I thought I saw a YouTube thing of them <laughs> doing that online. Whatever. I it doesn't matter. It. <laughs> Whatever. The point is, Cubs are picking it up, turning it around. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's good news. Everything yeah. else. Well, Bulls season is over. Yeah. Blackhawks season is over. But hockey's been pretty crazy. Yeah. Two sweeps in the first round. Mm -hmm. The Blue Jackets. First of all, I forgot that, or rather, I didn't know they had Matt Duchesne. Mm -hmm. That explains a lot. Right. They got Matt Duchesne and Panarin Mm. all on one team. That's pretty crazy. Bobrovsky's looking real good in goal. Yeah. I think that was obviously a major component to their sweep of the Lightning, who were ahead of the whole league by by the regular season's end by 20 points, mm-hmm. blew it. Yeah. In epic fashion. Wow. How do you do that? That's pretty crazy. How do you have a team with the the depth that they have at every position? <laughs> fucking, uh. Like, all those dudes. Fucking Killorn, Callahan, uh Kucherov, mm-hmm. Stamkos, man. 
Stamkos was like a, a, a minus nine or minus eight or nine for the series. Really? I mean, that's going to happen when you lose every game, but still. Jesus. Yeah. Well, well, so in any event, it's, as you said, it's been a pretty eventful postseason, and hopefully the next round is going to be even wackier. Mm. So basketball, or sorry, uh, the NCAA tournament, we didn't recap, but Texas Tech somehow reached the finals. Yeah. That was that was odd. And Virginia bounced back from a horrible defeat last year in the first round against the 16th seed. This year, they won it. Yep, they turned it all the way around. Yep. That probably doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right, moving on to the news. We start off with Disney Plus and their big announcement that the Disney Plus app will launch on November 12th of 2019. So they're luring us in by saying that starts off at five ninety nine per month, but will jump up. I believe it says in May, the price will jump up to ten ninety nine for standard. It'll go from thirteen ninety nine to fifteen ninety nine for premium, and basic will jump from seven ninety nine to eight ninety nine. And the other thing about the basic is uh, the difference between basic and standard is basic is I guess standard definition and only one device. Mm, and okay. Then. I think it's the same thing with, or sorry, not, it's like one device, but HD for whatever the second thing, standard, sorry. Very interesting. That's similar to Netflix's It's really annoying to call one basic and one standard. Mm -hmm. Like, how about numbering it? Like one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Sounds good enough? (laughs) Wait a minute. Is one the best or the worst? (laughs) Uh, is it D3 or is it first place? I don't fucking yeah, know. It's true. Anyway, point is uh, that's their thing. And uh, just a side note, that means th- that also includes uh, all 30 seasons of The Simpsons will be exclusively on Disney+. Plus. It also includes a whole host of original entertainment, including, but of course not limited to, uh, the S- Netflix, Netflix, the Star Wars show Mandalorian, uh, movies such as Disney's live-action remake of Lady and the Tramp, a forthcoming Phineas and Ferb movie, a movie called Stargirl that has nothing to do with the Stargirl show on DC Universe. No relation. No relation. Uh, a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids show. What? Or a movie, actually. I take that back. They're doing a Honey, I Shrunk Another? the Kids movie. Another? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, but in addition to that, we're going to... Hold on. Please let it die. Please let it die. Prequel, sequel, twinkle, twinkle, gives a fuck. All I know is that it's gonna suck. <sighs> okay, so that that's my thoughts on that Honey, I Shrunk the Kids thing. Moving on. Uh, we've got a, uh, of course, stories, or rather shows that we reported on in f- uh, prior stories. Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, the Scarlet Witch and Vision show that is now going to be called WandaVision. Which WandaVision, we'll get to. yeah. We'll get to that. That's uh, right. A Rogue One prequel series about Cassie and Andor. Uh, Marvel's What If show, a Monsters, Inc.-based animated show called Monsters at Work, as well as shows based on the movies Mighty Ducks, The Sandlot, and Love, Simon, and also The Hawkeye Show. Huh. Sandlot and Mighty Ducks, eh? Please let it die. Please let it die. Sorry, uh, I, my finger just keeps inadvertently slipping to <laughs> press play on that. That's all right. That's, that's strange. Oh, no, no relation to the, the things you just listed. None at all. <laughs> uh, I mean, especially not uh, Mighty Ducks and Sandlot. No, or Monsters, Inc. Yeah. But... Okay, but but uh, in, in seriousness, I'm fine with the Marvel shows. The Marvel shows? Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. Well, except I'm not fine with them announcing a Hawkeye show when we're literally, at the time of this podcast, a week out from the movie... Yeah, I agree I mean, with come you on. Because the whole thing is, yeah, he probably wasn't going to die, but we're supposed to think maybe because uh-huh. he's an OG Avenger. Well, that brings me back to the criticism I levied at the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer. Right. Coming out in a time where we're supposed to be getting hyped for, oh, God, what's going to happen with Endgame? I don't know. And I thought, didn't they announce that they weren't going to say shit like this? They did. They announced a policy change a little bit ago saying, yeah, we need to start being more cagey about our projects forthcoming. As soon as we ruin everything that's about to come out. Yeah. (laughs) Then we pinky promise, pinky promise that we won't do it next time. Now, but a Hawkeye show, I mean, I can't say I'm 
unhappy about the announcement, except for the fact that it's like, what is it, Kate Bishop? He's passing the torch. Mm. That I don't fuck with at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, it felt like it was a matter of time before they did the torch pass thing, but I thought they could do it like Black Panther and uh, Captain Marvel and whoever else. I thought they could pass the torch to new heroes. Right, right. Not do the lame mantle pass thing, but oh well. Yeah, I'm all right with all as, of these as, projects as well. As long as they continue to make the new ones, I guess, or whatever, mm-hmm. like Shang-Chi and whatnot. Right, right. The characters were their own thing, not just some bullshit clone version of, like, their, you know... Counterpart. Their, their mentors yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, the real story here is obviously... Or, or that, either that or some, you know, footnote version of the original. Right, right. Well... The story here is obviously that Marvel, or rather, not Marvel, Disney, they're throwing down the gauntlet in this this yeah. war of streaming services and, you know, talk about a lot of the things that, we're going to talk about a lot of the things that we like about this. Obviously, I have severe problems with streaming services and paywalls and content that's secret, secretive and I have to pay extra to get it. I don't like that. But as far as it goes, they're going about it in a way that makes sense. Competitive pricing, content that is, I mean, you, I'm looking Lots at this of, list. Well, there's a lot, there's a lot of variety. What here. is it? Like 500 movies are ready to go once they launch. Yeah. That's pretty wacky. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I hate to shit on DC universe all the time, but I'm sorry. It's just, this is a way better service. Mm-hmm. And I get that there's niche audience or whatever, but this kind of says, okay, let's go after a bunch of niches. Yeah. This is exactly what Ver- Verve did, but more uh, accessible to larger audiences. Yeah, and it's going to be you doing know? it in the form of... This is something we talked about with the Warner Brothers streaming app. Yeah. Which, which just the makes- DC component of it would have made more sense because Disney Plus is right. essentially... It's going to be made up of five the five hubs of Disney, Star Wars, Pixar, Nat Geo, and Marvel. Right, and then like DC would have made sense as a hub in a larger Warner Brothers. Right, it's like I don't know what DC would do. Like whatever the hell, like cooking networks they own. I don't know if they own. Yeah, like something like that. Like some reality network, a DC. They own everything. Turner. Yeah, that Cartoon Network. That's what I mean. Like a Cartoon Network. Yeah, a Cartoon Network hub. uh, A DC. DC. Like what? Whatever. Mm -hmm. Or you know. Warner Brothers classic movie, whatever, just like a bunch of hubs that would have made for a better overall service than just one, like measly service. A Harry with, Potter hub. I mean, Jesus Christ, they have how well, much? How yeah, much yeah, content okay. can I you make for saying. that? That's a whole world. That's. I mean, I you could say that. Maybe, I get it's what you're not saying. Much, they could have. They could have pulled a Disney in. I think Disney is to Star Wars as Warner Brothers is to Harry Potter. Yeah, to an, to an extent. It's not as big, but it's about as big of a standalone IP as Star Wars as, you know, I get what, candy. yeah. Well, the other thing is their movie library in general is huge. Right. They own, they own uh, uh, what do you call it, New Line and all those companies. So, right. Um, they have a lot of content there, and I just, I think they went about it in the reverse order. Like, we're going to make five streaming services off of five different things, like a DC streaming service, a, a Time Warner streaming service, and then a... There, what was the... T- didn't they have, like, a... It was a classic, like, Criterion, right? Yeah, something like that, but... Was that owned by them? I think they did buy it. I'm not sure. Well, the, okay, the point is... They went about a, it the wrong way. Whether or not it's Warner Brothers, that also was kind of like... That's a bit of a reach, you know? Yeah. Especially, and, especially as we pointed out, what, what's the one type of person who would much rather have DVD? Probably. Criterion. Mm-hmm. That that'd be my guess. But it just looks really silly when you have yeah. a company like DC or you have a streaming service like DC Universe offering less content for more money than Disney Plus will eventually. And that's of course that's the, the de- price detriment. rises. It, it it kind of freaks me out. It's like it's like Vegas. How they always say, no 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 no, no. just 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 keep feeding him drinks. He'll sit here. He'll mm-hmm. he'll like oh I'm up three hundred. Yeah. Don't worry. It's like sir, our tables are getting bleed. Blood dry. Don't worry. They'll lose it all. Well, it's like, that's, d- d- the- that's what Disney's doing. They're like, no, no, no. We're going to tell you it's starting at five ninety nine, mm-hmm. And then you think, but then everyone's just going to leave. No, 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 no. They'll stay. Don't worry. They'll stay. And 
they'll purchase the premium. Well, that's the downside of making yeah. a, making a first offer because the whoever's whoever makes the counter offers are always going to they're always going to have a you know the upper hand because they can respond to what the offer you just made was. Well, that, yeah, and the other thing is how crazy is that that not only they're they're telling you ahead of time the price jumps, mm-hmm. which. If you're a good enough streaming service, people don't really seem to mind that much as long as it's reasonable. Like, the Netflix price jumps were not that outrageous. Mm-hmm. And they're doing it for three different options, though. I mean, I kind of I feel like it's doubtful that many people would do the, what is it, basic or whatever the lowest? Sorry, basic. Yes, that is the lowest one. It was mm-hmm. basic, standard, and I believe it is premium. premium? Yes. Yeah. So... Whatever that's that's something. The point is, is that this does makes this makes a lot more sense, and it gives a lot more of a compelling argument than something like DC Universe, where it's like, yeah, we got a couple movies up there, a couple TV shows, yeah. three original TV shows, and a bunch of comics for nine dollars or yeah. whatever. It's this is this is like seven dollars, and it's a lot more stuff, a right. lot more original stuff. But that doesn't mean I like it, and that doesn't mean I'll get it because I don't. Again, I don't like I the mean, concept of putting shit up behind a paywall. I think it encourages piracy. You know, yeah, I not think, necessarily this in, alone, no, but this in conjunction with Walmart having a streaming service, DC having a streaming service, Warner Brothers starting their own streaming service, fucking Criterion starting their own streaming what, service, Amazon, Yahoo, now Disney. See, that's why I'm curious to see how Apple TV, this new Apple TV or channels or whatever the hell it is, is going to work. Because mm-hmm. it'd be interesting to see how, in a perfect world, since it seems like streaming services are the way things are going, mm-hmm. to have someone who who takes all of those and you have all your logins all in one place. Packages them. Yeah, because I, I mean, I know Hulu TV kind of has that, but... Comcast does that with Netflix and such. Yeah, but I'm talking to, like, Net... Or, sorry, Comcast is still cable. Mm-hmm. I mean, and yeah. Ideally, I'd like that. I'd like to have like, I go to my TV, yeah. like a smart TV. Like I go to my TV. Oh, I feel like watching TV today. Put on ESPN or put on CBS or whatever. whatever. And if I want to watch a Hulu show or a Disney Plus show, yeah. it's part of my package. You right. Know, I pay 10 bucks extra for all of those in one. Yeah. But I mean, right now, the way it works is you can just access those streaming services. It's not like part of a package. Right. It's, you have to. That you have to pay for those yeah, for your it's own completely pocket separate. separately. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying if Apple, it's like you pay for it on your Apple bill or whatever, that'd be kind of interesting. Do you think a bubble's growing? Kind of. Because uh, there's going to be too many streaming no, no, services. You know, what's you, know? Gonna, you know what's going to happen is eventually, I, well, I don't know. Because like Simpsons having nowhere else to watch that. Well, what about FXX? You're telling mm-hmm. me they're not going to have reruns on Comcast? Because what like do they do they mean exclusively like this is the only place you can watch reruns? I doubt that. Yeah, that's interesting. What's going to happen to FXX? That's another. Well, I don't think that's going anywhere. I'm sure that it'll just be Disney FXX. Mm-hmm. Let's probably no, keep the I, name. What, what I don't like is that everyone's kind of hoarding their materials. Like you can't have it. It's mine. <laughs> you know. But then again, there's some stuff that's available on two places at once. I just realized that Disney owns It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia now. That's crazy. That's, <laughs> that is, Isn't that wacky? That is. No, but, but I, I get what you're saying. It's like the idea that everything's kind of off in its own corner and you have to just like gather them all up. Yeah. It's kind of annoying, whereas cable just seems more sensible. Okay, turned on my thing. Here it, we go. It kind of seems counterintuitive, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's you know, the marketplace is I, I haven't gone to business school, but I'm assuming one of the things that they teach you in business school is that something like ease of use is always going to sell. Yeah. You know. So, well, that's what Disney it kind of seems like they're saying, "Well, we own this much stuff, so if anyone is to do it, which is why it the should Fox, be us. which is why the Fox purchase makes even more sense because they're like, well, now obvi- we own Fox. Yeah, that's obviously. a whole other that's a whole other world that we own. That's now. something that's I look, a whole other I look that up. If you add the box office reven- revenues together, it's something like 35 or 6% of the market for movies. To if you qu- if you quote, add uh, Disney and Fox together. To quote Sam Gerard from The Fugitive, that company's a monster. Oh, it sure is. <laughs> I mean, that's you. You were asking if I think it's a bubble. I 
think there is just a little bit so far. This I, this bubble. You know what's going like, to happen? It's going to be streaming's the way it's going to go, but it's going to change drastically in terms of how you access it and whatever. I think the the this this bubble popping will manifest itself in seeing like shittier second tier streaming services fall under. So like I think Hulu and Amazon Prime might go. Whereas, like, you'll have like two I don't or three. Know like, about that. you'll have Disney Plus. Well, I think Hulu will go. Hulu is going to get bought by fucking Disney anyway, because they already own part of it, right? Some, I think, yeah, I thought Hulu was partly owned by Fox, something like that. So now yeah. Disney owns most of it anyway. But I think those smaller, like, kind of like uh, fledgling uh, streaming services are just going to go, and you're going to have the two. Like, you you'll have like Disney Plus and Netflix, and maybe like Amazon Prime or so. But so does this seriously – like here's what I'm wondering. Does this seriously mean that if you want to watch Disney stuff, you have to either own physical copy or watch Disney Plus? Or see it in theaters. Well, I mean besides seeing it in theaters, like for home viewing. Yeah, I mean – that I, like I It's so. kind of weird. I never thought about in those terms, but I'm wrapping my head around that and that sounds pretty crazy. It's pretty okay, For example, something like – I don't know, like – Marvelous Miss Maisel or the Jack Ryan show. From the get-go, it's on this thing. So if you have this, what is it, Amazon Prime? Mm -hmm. If you have Amazon Prime, you can watch these shows here. And that's how it's been. Mm -hmm. But for something like, let's let's say, for example, like Planet of the Apes. Like, that's the kind of movie that's always on cable. Mm -hmm. That's just gone now. It's not going to be on cable anymore. Is that what's happening? I think it might, but I... I think it'll. I think it'll just be like Netflix, where it's like, yeah, this you, everyone, every now and then you can watch Silence of the Lambs on TV, but it's on instant play on Netflix right now. Yeah. Okay, because that that has happened where, you know, you click on Xfinity. There's a number of ways to watch it. Mm-hmm. You can watch it on, you know, record it in a couple of days when it's on TMC, or you can but, buy it right now, or you can whatever. Yeah, but so I'm wondering, that's weird. I just couldn't imagine Disney just pulling everything off of. Or rather, all of their material off of uh, various streaming services and cable. That would be pretty galvanized. I mean, this thing has already galvanized the media masses. For, for example, masses. Yeah. pulling off all Marvel from everywhere. Like, mm-hmm. It's essentially what they did with Netflix, in yeah, a way. Yeah, okay, but that's different because that's Netflix and that like that kind of stuff, that's kind of been the... Part of the course for Netflix. Things go, come and go, and people say, ah, what the fuck? And then some, it ebbs and flows in a way where sometimes a bunch of good shit comes in at once. Mm-hmm. It, and it's like more of a boutique thing where, like, not everybody has Netflix, but, like, if you have a basic cable package, you have CBS, NBC, ABC, and, you know, whatever the fuck. Yeah. You have the basic channels. Well, that's what I'm saying is there's still Disney-affiliated channels. So, mm-hmm. obviously, the stuff that's on there is not... Obviously, like I mean, this sounds so moronic to even bring up, but it's like obviously that shit's not just gonna. Nope, can't watch it on cable, only on Disney Plus. I think it'll just be at both, but it'll be more readily available at Disney Plus. Well, obviously, I, I think. Did I think, you happen to see any of the uh, Netflix stock no. news this week? <laughs> no, I'm sure it's bad. But it took quite a hit, man. Yeah. Well, okay. I was just gonna say. I guess it sounds like movies are gonna be the main point of contention. For how hard is it going to be to see, or how exclusive is it? Movies and I think some TV shows, which well, is obviously very like the, the kids sh- shows and parent, uh, yeah, especially. Well, they're also they've got a bunch of reality shows. They got a whole slate of ten reality shows, mm-hmm. cooking shows, docu like High School Musical, the the musical. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, where castmates who were in a High School Musical of a sort together, mm-hmm. uh, like. They just recreate it again. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like whatever, but I guess like that that'll probably have an audience. So one of the things and the that, cooking shows will too, obviously. One of the things that's interesting is that I think one of the reasons why Netflix took a big hit. Yeah, I was gonna say, do, do uh, go on about the Netflix. Well, I mean, they just took a big stock plunge yeah. at, the, at the market, so so to speak. And I think one of the reasons why this is is because a lot of people that have Netflix. And I, I know a lot of them are just like, they're just parents with kids. And like, if they are at home, they'll just, you know, t- put Netflix on, see whatever kids show is there, you know, Spirit or Troll Hunters or fucking yeah. How to Train Your Dragon, the show, and they'll just put it on. Yeah. And here's the thing, though. Who has more kids material than Disney? 
Well, obviously no one. So when you have Disney coming out saying, look, man, we're going to have every Disney movie on stream available for your kids to watch when you're off, you know, eating bonbons and falling asleep. Mm-hmm. Fuck, dude. Like, that's that's a huge... And for, and for less money. Yeah. That is... Uh, that's well, a, to a, start out. To start out, yeah. But that's that's a big statement to make. And it's, you know... Here, here's a thought. Hmm. Do you think the quality of the content and the quantity combined together might make this more appealing to some people than Netflix, for example. I guess it's, I guess we'll have to see. I mean, if the Mandalorian is any sort of indication, it looks pretty good. I'm just saying like, if, if you love serialized TV and stand up comedy and an occasional weird two thousands movie that like got panned by critics, then Netflix is your jam. Mm -hmm. Like if those are the only things you like, like even if you just love stamp comedy, Netflix is pretty goddamn good for that. Right. But if you like certain types of movies, it's, it's not that good of a deal. Yeah. I'm sorry. What, what did you say before us? Well, no, I was saying if, if the, if the Mandalorian, if what we've seen from the Mandalorian Mandalorian, if that's any indication, then their content looks Oh yeah, hold up. Let's talk about the cast of the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, while we we're on the subject, we haven't so, talked about that side story. The cast of the Mandalorian is here, and they've got some images. Mm-hmm. First of all, the images look really solid. Yeah, to a point where you know I'm sort of done with Star Wars, but <sighs> I thought it was out. You you might be get uh, dragging me back in. There was also some footage that leaked slash they showed at the Disney Plus conference. I haven't seen or heard any of it. Yeah. But from what I've heard, it looks good. Not specifically what about it looks good, but people like it. Right. Uh, but this cast is is pretty stacked. We got Pedro Pascal, right. who is the Viper from Game of Thrones, I believe. Uh, Gina Carano is on it. Nick Nolte is on it. Which is hilarious because... This is originally going to be Han Solo. Han Solo, and as... Uh, Patton Oswald pointed out, would have done a bang up job. <laughs> ah, jeez, God, I hell. I hell, Chewbacca. Chewbacca, that ain't a goddamn God, hyperdrive. Damn, damn Detroit's <laughs> beep, beep, beep. beep. <laughs> if you're uh, having, for those of you playing at home, if you want a good time, just search Patton Oswald, Nick Nolte, Han Solo. Yeah. It's a good time. It's a funny bit. Yeah. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito, Carl Weathers is here. Good All to right. see him getting back in the saddle. Uh, Werner Herzog. What? Yeah. Werner wow. Herzog. The man himself will be on a Star Wars show. Two lost souls. Two souls. On one twine. planet with two sons. <laughs> <laughs> Taika Waititi yeah. is going to be voicing uh, IG-11. Because he's directing the pilot, right? I think so. Well, he's he, directing he, one of them. John Favreau's yeah, also doing a bunch of this. Yeah. But the one name that really struck me on this list is none other than... Boston's own Bill Burr. What a great poll. <laughs> He's a, one of those guys where it's like, oh, Bill, like he random pops tr- up in random yeah. shit all the time. Like that Hugh Jackman movie about like the campaign guy that like has an affair. Like he was in yeah. that trailer. He's like, want to want to ask you a few questions. Yeah. I'm like, Bill, what the fuck are you doing in this movie? <laughs> in this serious people's movie? <laughs> yeah, he was in this like random ass horror movie I saw. Mm-hmm. Like, well, he was on, like, fucking Breaking Bad and shit. Yeah, that's another place. He was on Breaking Bad. He's he's one of those random dudes who just pops up from time to time. Yeah, and... Let's not forget, he was also play uh, a bit player in several classic sketches on Chappelle's show. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. But no, it's good to see him. I mean, I haven't seen him yet, but it's good to see that he's a part of this cast. So that's interesting. I, I, it's kind of weird. That makes me exponentially more interested. I guess the rumor is he's playing a mercenary. I, I can <laughs> I can get behind that. Uh, yeah, same. Plus, Gina Carano. Gina Carano. Th- that implies that this movie, or sorry, this show will be a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm saying that solely because I just rewatched uh, Fast and Furious 6. Yeah. So she's uh, going to throw down in this show. Also get this. The series will take place... Five years after the events of Return of the Jedi, and there will only be eight episodes in the first season. All right, now we're now we're cooking with gas. Okay, see, I can get behind that. Like eight, That's what I'm saying. eight's a good number, and I don't like TV. I don't yeah. like TV. Eight is a good number. Right. That's not a commitment. Eight's enough. 
Eight, you could say. Well, no, isn't that isn't that the name of that show? Yeah. <laughs> Eight, you could say, is enough. That's yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and you throw in Bill Burr and Werner Herzog, and we got ourselves a show. So that would be interesting. And as we talked about, this is many other things. Wait, Gina Carano, Werner Herzog, and Bill Burr in a show together. And Nick Nolte and Carl Weathers. Dylan, you son of a bitch himself. Dylan, you son of a bitch <laughs> is in this show. Yes. Wow. It's quite a cast. Quite well, a cast. Th- that's just such a not typical of what I thought they would... That That's just a weird cast. I never would have guessed that. Mm-hmm. You know... It's very it's wacky, man. very atypical, and I like that. And you got John Favreau here as the showrunner and writer and creators, and he, as an action movie director, like no, I mean, he's I pretty kn- good, man. I know he's good at that and all that stuff, but mm-hmm. to start, that wasn't enough to get me super excited. Yeah, there's because I, I feel like his movies and his stuff kind of rain, you know, they vary, vary, yeah, for sure. But yeah, this is one of the many things they're going to be offering. Probably the landmark yeah. series. This is going to be their orange. So, is the so new what, black. what? Yeah. So what's your beef with Wandavision? I just think it sounds dumb. It sounds like a Nick Jr. show. Like I so, don't know. it sounds like one of those like pundit shows tonight on Wandavision. Yeah, I'm like, I, really? That's the title? All right. All right. Today we're going to discuss the Covia Accords. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like they had a t- like. What was their beef with Vision and the Scarlet Witch? It's like you have a fucking show called. The Winter Soldier and Fa- or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like, what's wrong with what, like Vision and Scar- Scarlet Witch or Scarlet Witch and Vision or whatever? I don't know. It, it's I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, I'm not. I'm. I. It's just a little weird sounding name. That's all. Uh, the Loki show. I'm a little hesitant. The on. Loki show. I have. I, I'm sorry. Like that sounds stupid. Yeah. The Hawkeye I mean, show. Eh, it's good to see him getting his time to shine. I hope it will be his time to shine and not just Kate Bishop's. Yeah, not one of those bullshit. Ah, I'll just let you, young uh, character who no one gives a shit about. Well, I don't know. I guess she'll be in Endgame. Yeah. Spoiler. I guess I don't fucking know. Nah, it's not. I she was in a image or a TV spot or some BS. But yeah. Uh, what also has me interested is the Marvel What If show. I guess yeah. they re- they reveal what the first episode is going to be of that. It's going to be about uh, Peggy Carter getting the Super Soldier Serum instead of Steve. That sounds cool. Yeah, and it's going to be animated, of course, and Haley Atwell is going to be back to voice Peggy Carter. Okay. So I fuck with that, as the kids would say nowadays. Yeah. I, b- I believe it's F-U-X. Yes. I, I fucks, fucks with I f- that. I fucks with wit dis, if, yeah. as, as kids would say. So Hello, fellow kids. Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> No, but uh, I again, I'm not doubting that they're going to make good content. I just, I'm never going to be a big fan of the the sort of splintering off of media and the media going to their quarters and you know. But that's the thing is, it sounds like because we're excited about a number of these things, mm-hmm. and even a Star Wars thing, which I thought I was 100 percent done with. Right. I mean, I might be when I see the trailer, but on paper, that I'm way more interested than I thought I'd be. Right. So that seems like that's kind of the name of the game, though. Give them good stuff, and you can get away with a lot of shit. True. I mean, like, what other company could pull this off as well as they could? At the, at this point, especially because they just bought Fox, as you pointed out. Nobody. Like, Warner Brothers, brother, ah, sorry, Warner Brothers probably be, like... It would have made sense for them to make a Warner Brothers streaming service, but they didn't go that way. They went the back way. No, but I mean, I still think that they can. Oh, yeah. It's just... I agree. Uh, I don't know. It's just... It seems like Disney has this laid out... Or I feel like Disney waited a little longer, and I think that is going to pay off in the end. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. Yeah. So, I guess we'll just have to deal with it, because, I mean, my guess is this is going to be pretty popular. Yeah. So... It's made quite a splash already. So, yeah, I guess to sum it up, we're torn because we're all, oh, fuck this fragmenting stuff, stop it, damn it, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> we're also like, wow, a falcon show. <laughs> so we're just big, dumb hypocrites. All right. So that was, as I said, the main event story. Now moving on to some other smaller stories. So saw the trailer for Archer 1999. Yes. So this looks pretty interesting because uh, I know that Archer's been doing that thing where they do a different setting for each season. Mm -hmm. Was that like Dreamland was the one where it's all like film noir like? Yeah, Danger Island and Arthur Arthur, Archer Vice. Yeah. So I've seen you know a handful of episodes uh, from the later seasons. I've mostly 
I'm more familiar with the first three or four seasons, mm-hmm. which I've seen most of the episodes of. I've always liked that show. I kind of like that they're doing this. Uh, uh, one season is on one weird select place. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I can see how it's kind of a downer because if the setting isn't working or isn't working with the characters, you're stuck uh, You're stuck in that setting for the season. Yeah, for like 10 episodes or so. But So this one's all in space and kind of themed mostly looking like aliens. Yeah, yeah, it does. Well, there, there's a couple bits that I found. There's a lot of references yeah. in there, to, but they're not overt. They're like, you know, they're not calling attention like, hey, remember this from blah, blah, blah? It's just like, oh, that looks like the Colonial Marine suit or that looks like the – that reminds me of the get away from her, you bitch scene or that looks like the Alien Queen or whatever. It, well, and also they're they're – just making fun of the general tropes. For instance, when he has all that heavy shit and machinery, he's got that huge gut. He's like, mm-hmm. all right, never mind. I can only take seven or eight more steps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. no, this looks pretty funny. And I haven't been... It, this is one of those shows that's been a blind spot for me. I remember when it premiered on FX, like back in 2009, and I watched like... So this is owned by Disney now? It is owned by Disney oh, wow. now. Another God. one of the many properties owned by Disney. But I remember when it premiered back in 2009, and I watched maybe half of the first season. I thought it was really good, but I somehow fell off of it. And I've seen maybe parts of a bunch of episodes since. But this looks really fun, and I'd definitely be willing to give it a shot when it comes out later this year. See, you know what's also interesting, though, about this trailer hmm. is that style of animation they use, which is kind of weird. It this The design of everything looks really good. Yeah. Which is like, because it's that weird semi-cutout style, Mm -hmm. they can get away with making really detailed backdrops and all that stuff. Right, right. So it's like, from a design standpoint of like the back, you know, the backgrounds and all that stuff Mm -hmm. and the scenery, it looks really cool. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to check that out when it comes out. So I guess now would be a time as good as any to jump back on Archer 1999. When is that coming out again? Uh, I didn't say, but I'm imagining later this year. All right. So I guess we're just not going to tell you. <laughs> just Google Look it up. It. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to talk something not Disney, right? No, actually, we're going to talk Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker, or The Rise of Skywalker trailer. Excuse me. Are we? Yeah. Uh, let's let's do uh-oh. it. Let's do it. I know you got some thoughts. Star Wars Episode Nine: Return of the Retcons. <laughs> <laughs> That's yep. right. In this new Star Wars movie. We're going to undo all the fuck-ups of the last one. <laughs> and hey, look, it's another character. Surely we're not tugging on your heartstrings because of nostalgia. It's Lando Calrissian. <laughs> oh, yeah, and we're just going to kill him, too. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. It might. Yeah, but it's like, wouldn't it be cool if he and Han Solo were in it? I don't know. Yeah, that would have been cool to see Han Solo and him meet again and some reason like I, I hate to be that douchebag but like you know i was willing to hear him out mm-hmm. and I, there's about three cool shots in this trailer yeah there are <laughs> and then oh, see and then they say oh no one's really dead and it's like i know what they're doing oh it's a mystery is he still a ghost or is he really big i'm like i don't fucking care mm-hmm. to me you killed him you have to live with that yeah no, but like by the rules of the Star Wars, whatever, it's like he, he's Obi Wan status. Mm-hmm. But I guess, I don't know. I'm not a big enough nerd to know all the, what's it called? The extra lore shit all about the, Jedi. All of the um actuallys. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, <laughs> uh, there's several levels of Jedi similar to the Saiyan race in uh, Dragon Ball Z. There's no. several, several levels of, of Jedi no. ghosthood. You can be a specter, a poltergeist, and a spirit. <laughs> uh, basically. Oh, you forgot angel death lord spirit? <laughs> no. It also be a demon. It's like, believe me, I'm, I'm a nerd about Star Wars, but not... Only like, so much. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So there's that, and then there's the whole thing. You hear the Emperor cackle, and I'm like, now I'm fucking done. Mm-hmm. All right? Like, I don't know what that Make is. up your goddamn mind, all right? He, That's here's, confounded it, a lot of people. Well, no, my whole thing is, I know it's just a cackle, and maybe I'm overreacting, but it sounds like that's... No, because the dude who plays him was uh, at... 
the Star Wars celebration. Yeah, but I, I'm still unsure as to what capacity he's going to show up because they're saying like, no, he was on set. It's like, was he on set as fucking him or was he on set like for a dream sequence, a vision as a force ghost? Like we don't, we don't know any of that. That's true. It could just be bullshit. It could be almost nothing. But- right. I don't, I, I don't buy in them. So no, it's, he's back. It's him. It's like, look, you just had the laugh. But, you but don't I'm, need to tell me all this bullshit to but get I'm me kinda, to see it. But my thing is, if that's what it seems like you're using as your main one of your main selling points to get people hyped, mm-hmm. then you better deliver in one way or another. But to me, that's just an undoable job. Like Ember's dead. He got thrown down a fucking shaft. Mm-hmm. And the Death Star exploded. So, like, I was reading an article that someone said that. They said, he's, he's double dead and... I don't know who wrote that shit, but I agree with you, person who wrote that article. He's definitely double dead. Well, the I re- mean, Luke was shrieking in pain, and he gave his awkward, Father, please! <laughs> you know? So there is like, some stuff, though, in, in Revenge of the Sis. You, in Revenge of the Sis. Oh, Cyst, God, here we go. You will recall, in Revenge of the Sis, um, Pla- Jesus Christ, Palpatine is talking about how Darth Plagueis was one of the only people... Sith Lords, namely, who figured out how to cheat death, and he passed down this information to uh, his apprentice. And, like, remember there's that so, weird, awkward yeah. exchange where uh, Anakin's like, is there some way to accumulate this knowledge? And, like, fucking Palpatine's like, has that really awkward pause, and he's like, yes. Because, like, implying that he was, because he's Darth Plagueis' imp- apprentice. So, eventually, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, you find out he's bullshitting, and he didn't actually know how to cheat death, but did he, did he not? We don't know. That's been a point of contention. I don't know why the fuck he's there. I I'm just, a little intrigued. I don't I, know if I'm going to like it, but I want to see how they, I want to see how they dig themselves out of this. Like, all right, I see you. I see you, Cassidy, Ian McDermott in this. How are you going to explain that? Let me, you know what? Go ahead. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> and yet no one wants to bring back Darth Maul. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, you forgot a movie that everybody forgot. But, <laughs> man, see, this is what I'm talking about. It's like, when it gets too up its own ass with all this weird lore shit, it's like, can't you just either stop making them, which I know isn't going to happen, or just continue the story somewhere else? Mm-hmm. I almost feel like it would have been better if Seven didn't have Luke or Han or anyone. They're just like, Star Wars, a new damn thing. Mm-hmm. That's what's called. Star Wars, a new damn thing. Because... <laughs> I feel like you, I was stuck in seven. I was like, man, Han and Chewie are cool. I'm like, I don't really like these new shitty characters. And then eight, I'm like, you know what? I'm starting to turn around on Ray and Finn and Poe. I'm like, but the rest of the movie is not good. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's like, wh- where do you, you know, it, it seems like they're trying to do too much at once. I don't know. But it doesn't matter because it's going to make a billion dollars. I don't know, though. It's like, what, what if it makes less? I mean, it's, it's not. Well, the last Star one made. Wars. The last one made. Didn't did did la- wait? Let me. Well, check. here's what's insane about Star Wars as a brand brand power. The first one or seven rather made two, right? Yeah. Fuck. I, I was gonna say, did Last Jedi make a little bit more than that? I'm like, how, what the fuck am I talking about? Last Jedi made. Last Jedi made one point three, and Force Awakens made two. One point three is like still uh, shit loads of money. Uh, yeah, it's like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like the holy shit. <laughs> it's like that's a huge drop, but how bad? Of, how bad is a drop really? If you still made a billion, that's a billion and a third. That is fucking still, more money than any any average movie. Like that, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of money. And it, yeah, you know, knowing all the bullshit that that movie went through with, you know, all the fucking. Bad press and not bad press, but like bad. Uh, well, it's just like the opinions and stuff. Well, it's like the, it was just the the case of new fans and old fans and expectations. Right, right. I mean, like, you know, let's just be real. It 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 did some kind of weird shit with the plot that didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And Star Wars lore and Star Wars logistics and such. It was. It wasn't. Well, it's a like it's movie. like the Luke. The, the I would say Luke's whole thing. It's like, come on, you like. If you like it, fine, but it's like, you, you're telling me that, like, you don't understand how someone could be, like, a little off-put by that? Yeah, I was more put off by the the 
the Leia stuff, like the weird coma flying scene. It's just not even the concept of it. Like I have no problem with Leia having force powers. I just thought it looked really dumb. Like it, it was very poorly done. I don't know. It's also one of those things where now you're losing me. I thought I understood the rules of the force, but I didn't know you could float through space and not die yeah. or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Well, without this becoming a, a well, I guess we are big. Thing, yeah. Well, fuck it. it I, I it guess had ba- problems. I, yeah. <laughs> And I, we both. I, I guess based on those comments too, we're bigger Star Wars nerds than we thought. I mean, well, you can't do that with the force. You can't do that with the force. Luke, Luke would, no, Luke would never do that. Luke wouldn't. F- <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> poop, poop mouth, <laughs> poop coming out of your mouth. <laughs> but no. channeling your inner Chris Parnell there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the record, I'd probably give Last Jedi. Wait for it. A seven? No, dude. Because it's fu- it's it's All not right. that bad. It's it's, I, I, it's 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 not good. It's pretty bad. It's not it's not great. But I'll I, say it's this: fine. the action scenes are awesome. That's what I think. The dog fights are great, but I just thought the plot was shitty enough where I stick with I you know I stick with what I said at two point or sorry at two out of five. Yeah, I can I can understand that. Because I, happened, I get it too. You know what happened is I I originally gave it like a three point five. I'm like it's not that bad. Then I rewatched. I'm like, you know what? This is pretty fucking stupid. You know, I part made me realize though. how bad that movie is. What's that? When, when Rose crashes into the thing, and it's mm-hmm. like, don't you see? I'm making you fail your mission and making everyone like, you know, susceptible to being killed by the first order because love or whatever. Mm-hmm. Dummy. Like, yeah. What the fuck? What, like, what is going on? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was I was a little confused. I'm like. What's going on here? I had a similar reaction and I regressed in a similar way, but I came down from an eight to a seven. I was lying to myself as well. Oh, I it was went, to- totally lying to it, myself. It came down from a movie that I really, really, really almost soft loved to like, it's pretty, it's okay. Whatever. It's like, okay, my point is, I guess, yeah, so you think it's just okay, but even still, I'm not, I'm not too far away from you. I'm like, it, it's bad, but it's not like, unwatchable garbage, Mm -hmm. you know? I think I trust J.J. Whatever. Fuck, I don't want to ever talk about Last Jedi again. I'm (laughs) I'm just so sick of hearing about it. Well, hey, it was the last one. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was the previous movie. That's kind of the problem. It's it's like, all right, J.J., you're back in. Mm -hmm. Time to... It seems like it'll be a... a, I feel like there's no winning, no matter what. Yeah, it's going to piss off somebody. Well... I mean, that's unavoidable with every goddamn movie nowadays. But It's going to piss off everybody except me. Yeah. And I'm just going to sit there and probably going to give it a seven. Like, I give everything. Be and like, I, you know, it's pretty good. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to not see it. But, you know, if someone likes it, fuck it, who cares? Well, you know? Yeah, whatever. People yeah. can like whatever, I guess. It's just like, give me a goddamn Bounty Hunter movie. Give me my Mandalorian show. Well, yeah, I guess that'll... Probably we'll have, have a shitload of bounty hunters. We'll have we'll have already watched the Mandalorian for yeah. it, it would have been out for a month or so, right? November yeah, or I guess. something. And this comes out in December. Well, what what else happened in this trailer? Because I was just it seemed like one of those boring teasers where I'm like, on with it. Uh, there's a couple. There honestly, like the end of it, I didn't really I didn't really care for as much as I saw. Like, oh shit, action scenes. Like was that scene where like Kylo Ren just like hauls ass into a dude like cross guard facing him like totally impales him that scene where like ray flips and like shoves her fucking lightsaber into yeah. the cockpit of the tie fighter i'm like all right that's let's cool, go but- like this is this is why i watch these fucking movies is like oh cool swords that are that are lasers you know it's right? such bullshit hmm. I, I keep saying i'm not gonna see it hmm. because yeah fuck it but this is like the most uncrowded November, December I've seen in years. Yeah, unless you want to see cats. Fuck that. Okay. <laughs> if I have a choice, if I have to, I'm seeing Star Wars. If, okay. If I, I have to. You scared me a little. <laughs> Ugh, you know what? Like, I know at the very least I'll watch it at mm-hmm. some point on cable. But I'm just, I don't know. I'm just not excited for this. But Jason Derulo is going to be in Cats. Okay. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was, I was talking about Star Wars, but I'm also not excited for cats. Oh, that's okay. You know, I, like, you know I heard some rumor there's already shit going around about what size the cats are and if they're oh, shaped like... no. <laughs> if they're shaped like people or if they're shaped like cats. Oh, God, here we go. Catgate. Which is such horseshit because I feel like... I, I, 
you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm like, you know what? I don't even need to read any more about this. You know what happened? Someone said something and it was probably misquoted. Mm-hmm. And that's that. Mm. What are they going to do? Like make them like, like yoga hosers? <laughs> you know, the little sausage, the sausage dudes. Nazis. They, yeah. <laughs> They're just going to make them people in cat suits, but that tall. Ooh, this is a weird, weird year for movies, isn't it? What the hell? Seriously, a cat's movie. <laughs> That's what we got well, when, going on. When, when is that coming out? The same weekend as, as Star Wars. No, for it's real? It's going to be a battle. Oh, man. God almighty. Uh, but Star Wars, nine. I'll be there. You will not be there. You know, I fuck understand. It. No, I, you know what? I got to stop. I'm, no, why, why should I go? It's like, I, I don't want to be that dumbass who's like... I don't blame you. I think it looks bad. Goes to see it. See, I thought it sucked. No, I don't. No, That's I don't right. want to do that. Fuck that. You know what? I'll let people enjoy it if they want to. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Just, I'm I'm kind of done with Star Wars. I feel you. They've, Except it's, Mandalorian's making me think, eh, maybe I'm not. Because it's like not as canon as this. And you well, know, that's the thing is, I, I'm like, let's step away from the like the whole Skywalker family altogether. Mm-hmm. And who, who's who, you know what? Honestly, here's like a crazy thought. What if they do a whole new thing with Ray and Finn and all that? Just leave the Skywalkers behind. Maybe I'd be interested. Hmm. But until then, I want to see Gina Carano arm barring people. Arm barring in a galaxy. <laughs> yeah. Arm barring people and, you know, Superman punching aliens uh, on a planet far, far away and such. Let's do it. Or rather, in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. So that's the Star Wars teaser. There was deserts in it. <laughs> and heavy breathing. And swords. Yeah. Where swords are just lightsabers. La- la- laser swords. Oh, so man, you, you got me all excited. I thought there was going to be random swords for no reason. No, it's obsolete tech. Oh, well, that that would have <laughs> that would have oddly... Unless the sunk. swords are really hot. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, they didn't finish uh, hitting them with the old iron. Yeah. <laughs> Blacksmith, you didn't finish here, sir. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, so that'll do it for Star Wars. Next, we've got a little bit of a surprise story. So Tomb Raider 2 is apparently in the works and has a new writer in Amy Jump, who co-wrote Free Fire. Mm-hmm. So firstly, as someone who thought Tomb Raider was pretty decent, you know, I gave it a three out of five. Mm. It was a decent movie, but I think the main problem, as I pointed out in our review, is the script. Yeah. And I think Amy Jump... Seems like an update. Seems like a really good upgrade. Or upgrade, yeah. For yeah. the script, so I'm all about that. Especially Free Fire was so funny, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that could really, really help elevate the script. But it was also, it was one of those movies where, like Free Fire, it didn't need much to be a great movie. Mm-hmm. It just needed a gun. It was literally a gun deal goes wrong, turns into a, a big gunfight. Right. And it was like kind of, you know, it had a lot of different tones, but it worked well. Mm-hmm. It was kind of goofy, but also serious when it needed to be because, it you know, it's a gunfight. Oh, yeah. But it, it's like a dark comedy. It had a lot going for it. Yeah, it was really fun. And I, I think that the sort of elements of realism in, in that gunfight, I don't know. I just, I feel like it was structured well. I feel like the tone was really good. I feel like that could work for... Even though this is a sequel to a movie I haven't seen, so I can't really speak to whether or not she's going to be a complete, you know. Whatever. Honestly, if you saw the trailer, you pretty much got the gist of Tomb Raider. Okay, so she, yeah, so like I guess to, to, she to seems be, like she'll transfer well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to this. The other thing is Alicia Vikander was perfect in the role, so it, it'd be good to see her get another swing at it. Mm-hmm. Also, let's give Daniel Wu a bigger role, please. Yeah, he was like barely in it. Hmm. Or, I mean, he wasn't barely in it. He just didn't get, like, he didn't get to beat anyone's ass. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, come on, mean, this guy's from... This in, guy's from... Uh, into the Badlands? Bad bad yeah. Come on now. Damn. Like, all, all he did was uh, rifle butt someone. Oh. It's Why like, would you cast him? <laughs> that's like, that makes about as much sense as Ronda Rousey in Mile 22 does nothing for first five minutes, gets killed. Or Eco Waste yeah. and Yaya Rahian and... St- Star Wars? Oh, God. Well, don't... You know what? Come on, man. I'm trying to not say <laughs> so much negative shit about Star Wars. You're not making this easy. But this... this Hopefully, Daniel <laughs> will have more to do. 
Which What's that? Hopefully Daniel Wu will have more to do, and so will, uh, hopefully this movie will be even better than the first one, which did pretty well. It, it did, did okay. It did fine. It was like about 100 budget against 270 worldwide. Yeah, that's all right. Which would have been r- really good 10, 20 years ago, and mm-hmm. it's just like, that's like, now that it's something along the lines of... Barely breaking even or yeah. some shit. I don't know how this shit works. It's like, oh, well, we spent $400 million on marketing, so we lost a trillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that math doesn't make sense at all. It's like, nothing does. <laughs> uh, hopefully this will work out. I, again, I haven't seen it, but I, I trust. I, I think the, the – uh, I have seen Free Fire, so I trust her. I think, yeah, I think there's a major upgrade for the script. Mm-hmm. Uh, director, I could – Give or I'd give or take, I guess. Is it you? you Ro- it was Roar Roar Thog. Thog. You think he'll come back? Mm, could be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I because I felt like the main weaknesses were writing things. Okay. For example, I won't give it away. Uh, the third act has kind of a big f- fake out where it's like, well, why didn't you do what you uh, implied you were gonna do? Mm. It's kind of one of those twists that made things less spectacular. Okay. You know, I don't want to give it away, but that it was stuff like that and that just that spoke to the script, you mm. know. That's unfortunate. Not did not really seem like there's too much on the director. So that was the other thing is like it was shot pretty decently and I thought the fight scenes were awesome, so there's no problem with the stunt choreography or, or stunt coordination and or, or anything like that. Okay. So that'll do it for Tomb Raider. The boys not uh NS FW trailer. Mm-hmm. So the boys, the series coming to uh, Amazon Prime. The more and more I see of this show, yeah, the I more did, intrigued I get. Firstly, I did not do a transition. I just ran right into that. But anyway, that's all right. That's all right. all right. Yeah, the more I see, I agree. The more I see of this show, the more interested I am. But I have one major concern. I think I know what it is. Where the hell is the bulldog? <laughs> He just keeps def- selling me this bulldog on the posters and the, the you and know, and the what, first whatnot. the very first teaser. What the hell you're holding out on us? Yeah, come on, I want to see more of this bulldog? What they are giving us is ladies sitting on men's faces until they explode. Yeah, because she's super strength or whatever. <laughs> what and, the and fuck like is going dolphins on? with machine guns? <laughs> like it's what the, the kind hell of- is going on? See, you know what this kind of looks like to me, hmm. where Deadpool is winking and nudging at the camera. And Watchmen is deconstructing. What is a superhero? Blah blah blah. Everything's shitty. Let's you know. Let's tear it down. Mm-hmm. This is kind of a weird combination of both. It's it's a happy go lucky version of tearing down superheroes, mm-hmm. which is what I kind of like about it. Yeah, I think the tone is really it's really cheeky and weird, and I'm I'm excited to see where this goes. Everything I've again, everything I've seen from this, I'm just. Yeah, I've been really, really on board, and I think that Evan Goldberg and Seth Rogen as showrunners, in particular, recently, Preacher, uh, Future Man, and then Eric Kripke, who's done Supernatural, who I respect. I mean, that's a show that's been on for what twelve. It's seasons? on. It's like final season. It's the fourteenth season or something. Fucking insane. The, yeah, the show's been on forever, and clearly they've had a really good fan base there with Supernatural. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking everything I see. The show looks really slick, too. Like, the cinematography looks cool. There, there's something that, about it that seems to stand out more compared to other Amazon shows. Yeah. In terms of look. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm going to be there for when this thing comes out. And by be there, I mean probably not because I don't have Amazon Prime. <laughs> but <laughs> God damn it. Why do you have to rain on my parade? July 26th is yeah. when this will be premiering. Yeah, so we finally have a date because we'd been talking about how it didn't have one. Now we got it. Mm-hmm. So be on the lookout for it then. For those of you playing at home, are you excited for the boys? Do you have Amazon? Do you have a bulldog? Yeah, if you do, tell me about your bulldog because bulldogs send, are send awesome. Send us a picture. Yeah, send us a picture. Let's let's see this bulldog. Uh, anyway, so that'll do it. Uh, I guess there's just a lot of other little stories. They're just kind of quick things. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 finally has a date, uh, due to be out in July 19th. Mm-hmm. That, of S- course, is going to be, uh, for the Nintendo Switch. Still no sign of Fantastic Four. Hmm. I was researching it. Apparently there's weird things about video game character rights. Oh, really? I guess. How so? I don't know. It's like, it's like different than whwhatever movie <laughs> studio is sometimes. I, It's real weird. Huh. 
Actually, I don't know if that's true. I, I think I might just be lying. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just like, where the hell are they? Mm-hmm. It always seems like... they're. Doesn't it seem like they're excluded a lot? Like, they're not in the Capcom Marvel games. Yeah, the last, the last really... Were they in one of the Ultimate Alliances? I don't... I, I want to say yes. I want to say they were in the first one. I remember playing as the thing. But yeah. I might be wrong. I could be imagining it. I do remember the Fantastic Point Four is we, game. We, yeah, we really did our research with this whole Fantastic <laughs> Four thing. <laughs> I didn't even rec- I didn't even realize they were gone because you know, unfortunately they've but been. But I that, feel like that that I always the reason I noticed is because normally it seems like they're leaning heavily on certain groups. Mm, like yeah, in the yeah. old old Capcom games, mm-hmm. it was all about X Men and then a few select others. Mm-hmm. Like even in the uh, Marvel superheroes. Not versus Street Fighter, just Marvel superheroes. Capcom game, it was three or four of them were X Men. Hmm. You know? You're right. I know so that because Wolverine it. was there, Psylocke was there. I think someone like real random, like Spiral or some bullshit, was there. Mm. But that might have been Children of the Atom. That game was the fucking business. <laughs> oh man, that game was good. Uh, so there's that. PS 5s coming out in yeah. 2020 mm-hmm. with. Get ready for this. Backwards compatibility. Oh boy, who would have thought? What a novel idea. Yeah. Well, it's it's weird. Is so, even a normie gamer such as myself, when I heard that, I thought this I know about just because I've been hearing all about it. It's also going to have in, incredibly head exploding graphics in 8K, and I'm just sitting there like. Whatever happened to 1080p? <laughs> What's wrong with 1080p at 60 frames per second, guys? I, I don't get the 8K. It's, it's at the point, how good do the graphics need to be? Mm-hmm. You know? I don't even know. I'll have to find out. This may sound weird, and this just may be my old man yelling at cloud syndrome, but I kind of feel like, aren't video games supposed to have a little artifice? Like, isn't that part of the, the, the novelty? <laughs> Oh my god, it's almost like I'm going outside. Yuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of. <laughs> I don't want to actually go outside. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like I want my video games to be weird, goofy cartoon things. Right, right. I mean, I get that there's always going to be the Grand Theft Auto stuff, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I want to play that Yoshi game. You heard about this one? Oh, Yoshi's, Yoshi's Crafted World. Yeah, yeah. It's What's up of- with Mario doing, a, doing all this weird shit, you know, over the years? This is Mario, but he's got a water pack and stuff. Yeah. This time he's not there, and Luigi's looking for him. Mm -hmm. In a haunted house. In a haunted house. (laughs) This time, it's basically the creators did mushrooms, and now we have Mario Galaxy. (laughs) Yeah. No, I mean, it looks pretty crazy. It reminds me a lot of the, uh, what do you call it? Sort of the Kirby's Epic Yarn type, you know, like. Yeah. But, oh, wait, no, I'm stupid. I'm thinking about Yoshi's Woolly World. Yeah. Wasn't that what that was, Woolly World? I don't know. There's a lot of different Yoshi games. Yoshi's cr- Yoshi's Crafted World is different. But that Yo- Yoshi's too. Island, Yoshi's Story, those Dude, are all classics. that was the last Yoshi game I played was Yoshi's Story. Which was the one for Game Boy? Ooh. I think it was... Yoshi's Island. Which I think was originally in SNN... Oh, SNES? SNES game, I think. A SNES game? Let me look it up real quick. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Yoshi's Island was SNES, and then it was later Game Boy Advance. Oh, okay. That's honestly one of my favorite Mario games, for real. You ever played that one? Uh, Yoshi's Island? Yeah, yeah. Here and there, I was more of a Yoshi story kid, but that Yoshi was the, does... Was that the... N64 one. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, that game is the fucking best. Uh, they're all good, man. Yoshi's got some good titles. Sure does, Billy. He sure does. So anyway, that'll do it for the news portion of today's podcast. And now we move on to our review portion of the podcast, where we start off reviewing the latest reboot of Hellboy, directed by Neil Marshall, the director of The Descent. Do we have to? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, let's first talk a little bit about, because I know we've both seen both Hellboy movies. Yeah, How I do you liked, feel about them? I liked both of them, kind of, for what they were. Uh, overall, I'd say they're decent movies. Not amazing, but pretty good. 
Yeah, I was never the biggest like slobbering fan of it, but I remember thinking they were solid as hell. Like yeah. really fun, you know, things about them that worked especially well and uh yeah, but anyway. I haven't uh never really thought I'd come to appreciate those Guillermo del Toro flicks more. Yeah, than no, now. No, I hear you. I like them a little bit more now that I have seen this yeah. one. Obviously, so, this has been getting ran into the no, ground I mean, by a bunch of people. This has been getting shit on mercilessly. And, uh, well... Some of it's fair, some of it not so much. I, I would say a lot of it's pretty fair. Mm-hmm. But one of the main points of, conten- uh, sorry, of contention that didn't really bother me that much, people are saying this is overly gory. Yeah, and I don't think it is. I mean, it is at times, but not overwhel- not overall. Yeah, it was. It wasn't like you know, throwing kidneys and intestines at the screen and then tr- you know streaking down the lens like. Arr! Yeah, no, it's not that bad. <laughs> like, like slowly sliding down and leaving a trail. But like, it wasn't that like overtly disgusting. It. I mean, the the reviews are making it seem like fucking Eli Roth made this. Yeah, and like, it's not. This that is bad. not hostile to. No, it's it's. It gets violent. Like, don't bring your kids to see this. No but shit. It's, it's I mean, pretty. It's R. You know, it's it's just an R-rated movie, and that's one of the biggest problems that I had with this is that, and we were talking about this going in, is yeah. that it leans a little bit too far into the R to the point of almost self-parody, where it was. Like, I mean, that, even yeah. the first few minutes of the movie, it just felt like it felt like it had. And I was talking about this with another friend of mine. Uh, we were we were comparing it to like. This felt like it, um, it was really trying to shit on the past two Guillermo del Toro movies. And How so? It's like, hey, nerds, remember those shitty Guillermo del Toro Hellboy movies that you all hated? It's like, no. Mm-hmm. Well, get a load of this. It's the fucking Middle Ages. Like, f every other word is fuck and like fuck shit, fuck, fuck, and like you know, like yeah, yeah. there's gore, but. It's, like, not horrible. It's not hostile, but, like, still, like, people get their heads blown off. The opening scene is, like, I mean, the, Mila Jovich gets her head cut off, and then her arm cut off. And then it's just, but like... that was part of the story. So That's true. I mean, that that's fair. But do you remember the, no, no, you, the you know Mike Mignola... Okay. Com- have you read the Mike Mignola comics at all? A little bit. Are they that bad? Or like, are they like that, that, like, overtly, like... Did they... When you read them, like, like could you hear... Overly edgy? No. No, that's... See, that's what I meant. Like, this was, like... Like, Hollywood Undead could have done the score for this movie. No, I mean, I, okay, he, here's what I'll agree with. It's not that the bo- the gore itself was so bothersome. It just felt out of place in this movie. Right. I think if that's what people have a problem with, yeah, I agree with you there. I'm just saying, like, the gore itself, like, I've seen, as you know, as I said, this ain't hostile to. It could be a lot grosser. Well, I mean, the the first... See, you know what's weird is the, the gore is so cheap by the end of the movie. You know, there's well, so much the of it that's just thing, like... Yeah. It, there becomes an affla- inflation on, oh, some guy got his head ripped off, whatever. You know, but like when somebody got fucking shot, or in the beginning of Hellboy, like even when we... The original Hellboy, um, the Guillermo del Toro one, where we see like Rasputin like kills that guy and he falls onto like that glyph and like the yeah. blood like fills up. It's like the blood's like all goopy and like it's just like... The tone was better, so it wasn't as flippant about people getting killed. So when people got killed, you're more along the lines to be shocked by, like, oh, someone just got fucking blown away. Yeah, and I mean, this movie's. I mean, Jesus Christ, there's so many issues to talk about with this. Well, yeah, from the get go, you know, honestly, uh, well, minor spoiler: hmm. the narrator, for no reason at all, for like second or third line of the movie, he says. In the middle fucking ages. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, the first word out of the movie is, like, fuck. I literally sat back when I heard that and sat and thought in my head, okay, so this movie's going to be bad. Mm-hmm. It, it's, like... It doesn't get better after that scene, See, that's either. the thing, is I thought, well, maybe, you know, Alex, don't jump to conclusions that fast. Mm-hmm. And then the rest of the movie said, yes, Alex, jump to conclusions that fast. And you know what the weird thing is? People are kind of saying that this is so above and beyond bad, but this was, it was more that it was just bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really bad, but like, it wasn't interesting bad. It was just kind of, everything was just so blah. Mm -hmm. Like the cinematography was just kind of whatever. A lot of the fight scenes, there's a part where uh, Hellboy's fighting one of the monsters and they're trading blows and they just abruptly stop for a second and it was just real weird. It just felt very broken up and choppy. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I was like, uh, half expecting them to just like, you know, go to your corners, have a ringman come out. No man, you got to throw the three, two, three, two, three, two. <laughs> Cut man comes out. Yeah. Of the <laughs> two, three, corner. two. Yeah, and then the high kicks, high kicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a very haphazard film in terms of how it's put together. Like the opening scene, this which isn't spoilers. it's yeah. a, it's a it's like a, a flashback scene. Yeah, one of many. Of many N- Niyamu or many. whatever her name is. I call her Nimrod. That's yeah, good. yeah. <laughs> Nimway, I think is her name. Nimway, so, that's the right. Blood Queen, played by Mila Jovovich. Like there are beats. I swear to God, there isn't one emotion in this opening scene that lasts more than a half second. Like there's yeah. a there's a scene where she gets stabbed through the chest at, at a tree, and she's like, "You fools, you can't stop me with mere mortal weapons." King Arthur comes up. I have Excalibur, Mila Jovovich. <gasps> no, it's like. What is going? It feels like. Did you feel like that scene was like somebody yeah, on you someone wanna, on you speed know, like edited that shit? <laughs> well, it reminded me of a couple movies. What's that? One, it reminded me of a certain fella by the name of Doobie White, who's a not, little bit an editor. Oh, not as bad, but a not, little bit. Not even close to as bad, but it, it was sort of. It was it, missing about seventeen hundred extra cuts. No, it was one of those. It was <laughs> no, it was one of the yes. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, re- to reach his legendary status, one must cut more. Yes. No, but it did feel, it, it felt like one of those things where every shot felt like it was two or three, you know, a tick or two uh, too soon, mm-hmm. you know? It's like, let this breathe a little bit, yeah. guys. Yeah, you know what? There was another movie that was 72 minutes in run running length. Ooh. Jonah Hex. This had the opposite problem, though, where it's... This had too much material. It had so and yeah, like, too no, much material what, that didn't need to be there. Like, here's this other flashback. No, but I was referring to the editing style. Oh yeah, yeah. But you're okay. Go but that, on. No, go that's on with the the material. Like that. That's the reason. Because I was starting to think that. I'm like, why are we cutting so fast? And I later on realized, oh shit, it's because you have a bunch of useless shit you want to show me. Like, yeah. Daniel Day Kim, how'd you get scars on your face? I was in the forest. And that, and that oh seemed, my god! Yeah, There's okay. So many flashbacks. The flashbacks were the- Hellboy. I was there the day you were born. Oh fuck! All right, do we? Uh, are we just giving up on non-spoilers? Well, I'm not spoiling right, much. Okay. I mean, well, we all know yeah. Hellboy gets. No, okay. Born. The point. Yes, there are flashbacks. Mm-hmm. There, far too many of them, and there is one that's actually pretty, pretty damn good. Which one? Well, I can't tell. Oh, okay. I'll save that for spoilers. Okay. There's one that I thought was pretty decent. Mm -hmm. But in addition to the flashbacks, there's just scenes that really didn't seem to matter. Yeah. Like the beginning scene where we find Hellboy, that felt like a really uh, long walk off a short pier. Just a lot of detours. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's there's there's a scene where he's got to fight giants. Right. There's one crucial line of dialogue in about four or five scenes that just felt super long and unnecessary. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of twists and turns that you think, okay, where's this going? Oh, right. It's just not a non-development and isn't going anywhere. And that involves something to do with the giants, which mm-hmm. we'll find, we'll talk about. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's a bad movie. It, it's really bad. I'm yeah. not, I'm not going to, I could forgive all the narrative problem. If I, if well, the action was cool, well, if the, the action's, that's honestly one of the things I didn't mind. Like, it's not very good, but I th- well, the scene you know where he fights I, the Giants is pretty cool. Yeah, I was going to say, that one's all right. I, uh, I think it's, you know what it is? It's that it varies so much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's it's just really not consistent across the board. Mm-hmm. Even the CGI, which, again, we'll get to in spoilers. <laughs> there's some specific CGI moments that are really atrocious for, now I'll say this to be fair, for 2019. Yeah, yeah. You know, two thousand seven. Pretty good. Yeah. If this was if this was the Mummy Returns. Yeah. About on par with what we got. Yeah. But <laughs> for a couple scenes. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Uh, but there was also, I mean, there are some scenes where the CGI was all right or it was yeah, fine. Yeah, it's fine. Point being, it's very inconsistent in yes. many regards, if it, not it's, all. It's pretty inconsistent in every way. Mm-hmm. And I guess. The weird thing was about the detours is you didn't get so lost that you couldn't follow the thread. Overall, mm-hmm. it's pretty straightforward. It's yeah. just there's a lot of little segues that kind of don't matter. And then it's like, all right, but back to the main through line. Right, right. Problem is the main through line was kind of shitty. Mm-hmm. There were some developments that were sort of B stories about Hellboy and how he feels about his role about being Hellboy. Mm-hmm. They sort of dropped that on us a little too late, I and think then, is a big problem. And in the end, it just feels like a 
not as well developed version of the way they handled that in the Get Del Toro films. Okay, you know. So now on to spoilers, unless you got something else. Well, just a brief note uh, for people who don't want to. I mean, unless you, you don't care about spoilers, but how, the acting, acting overall, what, what would you give it? High marks in any region. Uh, I thought Hellboy was fine. I like David Harbour. I thought Sasha Lane needs. I thought yeah, she needs some work on the accent. You know what's weird is it's it, other it, than it, you know I what? didn't. It didn't. I honestly thought it was real because for, to me, like Cockney accents sound so offensive, even when they're actual ones. Oh, I know it. <laughs> it's like you, dude, you know where I get that. I get that with Irish accents. I like. I feel like such a dumbass. I'm like, what a stupid phony Irish accent. That like, no, that's once. actually them talking. Like, Alex, no, sh- 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 that, like he's from Ireland. You idiot. I'm like, oh, but. Point. Now that I think about it, now knowing that she was American doing a Cockney accent, I'm like, all right, maybe I, yeah, it's yeah. not great. Well, no, something <laughs> felt weird about it. I, I mean, it's over overdone, overcooked a little bit. Yeah, it's it's a little much. I think her acting in general was fine. It's fine, everybody I, does honestly, okay. I kind of feel like she was one of the only characters that was likable. Yeah, she's not really a bad person. Whereas, and that's well, what's one of his the, name? Like Daniel Day Kim is as yeah. His character sucked. Yeah, he's not great. He's completely unnecessary. Mm-hmm. And there's this weird, like, they're trying to overdo the whole animosity between Ooh, him and what's Hellboy. His, what's his motivation? And it doesn't go anywhere. <sighs> like, who cares? He's like, I don't trust you, Hellboy. And the Hellboy's like, I don't trust you. It's like, you know, th- this is not helping this movie right now. See, that's that's my big issue with this movie that I want to come back to. It's not, I don't have a problem with the, it, it's the take. It's a bad take on Hellboy. So there, there was once a nuanced caginess to the interpretation of the character in the Del Toro films. It was almost like it was almost sad. He was yeah. a very sad character, but he was also most importantly cool. Yeah. But now, where there was once sadness, there is anger. He's always yelling at Dad, "Fuck you, Dad!" and like, yeah. pissed, "You made me a weapon." And there was once like fun sardonic wit. Yeah. There was shitty camera winking punniness. Now you know there's a, a shit you not. There's a line in here where he says. A character gets decapitated, and he says, "Why don't you quit while you're ahead?" I shit you not, is a line. Uh, and when there was you once know, nuance, uh, there's uh, now just a big bloated mess of a story with people getting their faces ripped off for the sake of making it look cool. And I'm all for that, but I just didn't feel anything. It's just like you got to have face ripping off and a great story to justify it. It's loud, it's ugly, and it's poorly put together. Yeah, you know? like I don't know what else to say about it. It's not great. Yeah, so there's a few want, glimmers of competency. Like I like yeah. David Harbor. The couple well, that, action actually, scenes are good. Yeah, I mean, but that's kind of my problem. Is what back to what you were saying about his character? He just comes off as kind of a, a wannabe Wolverine from the comics. Yeah, like he's not a like wasn't Hellboy from the? I hate comparing it to the originals or the the previous movies, but like you get a sense he's a big softy. He's always kind of eating, a smart. Yeah, he's always eating baby Ruths. Like he's got a sweet tooth. Like he's got a heart. This guy's just an asshole, yeah, and like he, he's just, not a bad character to watch, but like no, just yeah, a that's little the thing. It's like I could, I mean, it's not that I can't watch a character like this. It's just I guess it was a bit too much of a departure for me from what I thought Hellboy was. Because as you said, I kind of figured he was, you know, sort of a a, a lovable oaf in some ways. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, as you said, he was just kind of grumpy here. Yeah. All right, let's just move on to spoilers. So. I guess I'll start with some goods. Yes. The giant fight was pretty cool. I like that scene. I thought it was not bad. Though I didn't at all, I cannot justify the actual point oh, of it. Well, see, that's what's so dumb. We were only trying to kill you, Hellboy. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, all right, cool. So where's this going? She mu- They must be working with the queen. Psych, the queen killed everyone. Yeah. Okay, what the hell was the point of any of that? Yeah, it's a huge detour. It's okay. about... 15 minutes yeah. of screen time that we can just get rid of and we can make the editing of the yeah. entire movie better if you do that for a lot of scenes that don't need to be there but lest, well, lest we forget it's there, there there's one scene that didn't need to be there it was actually my favorite scene which one lobster johnson <laughs> thomas that, hayden church no that shit was cool yeah that was funny you know it was weird it was kind of campy and it felt like almost like a more hyper wacky version of the Guillermo del Toro Hellboys. Mm. That felt like that didn't belong in this movie. Yeah, it was very weird, especially because it never comes back. Yeah, I thought, what the... You know what it reminded me of, honestly? Mm. A little too much? The Flash being in uh, Suicide Suicide Squad. Squad. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, cool, look at this. 
Oh, you know, that's kind of better than the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, well. <laughs> it's such a weird scene, but I, I, I feel you, and it was at least good to see, like, oh, Thomas Hayden Church, cool. No, but I thought, like, <laughs> the action looked cool in that scene. I thought it was, you know, well-designed. Everything looked good in that scene. Mm-hmm. Also, I guess this is the other good thing, although it was also kind of not, because it was a very pointless scene. What's that? The Baba Yaga. Yeah, what the fuck? Her design was creepy as hell. See, I, that's what, that's another one of the glimmers I was going to say, is that I think the production design at times is very interesting. That, but that's what I mean. It's like you couldn't even say, oh, the production design Overall, across the board. Yeah, no. no, it's not. There are a couple scenes that are really st- stupid and bad to look at. There are a couple characters the that suck. pro wrestling scene's real dumb. Yeah, it's not great. That's another thing. You know what they did? They, they for the sake of editing a trailer, there are two action scenes in particular, that really had no bearing on the plot Mm -hmm. that were used as major cutting points and beats in the trailer. The wrestling scene at the beginning and the last scene at the end, Mm -hmm. which I thought was like a pretty decent action scene. But, you know, by that time, it it almost feels like a dream sequence. Like, this doesn't count. This doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. Who cares? Yeah. You know? Like, great. Finally, we get to see Sasha Lane, whatever her character's name is, and the damn day Kim and Hellboy all working together doing, you know, their trio of badassery. And it's like, you know what? By this point, I'm like, I was literally saying to myself, please just end. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm done with this. It's long. It's two hours too long. <laughs> it's two hours. Like, this did not need to be two hours, man. That, well, that's another thing. It definitely didn't need to be two hours. Uh, Sasha Lane, her whole thing. Oh, I can kind of do ghost stuff. Mm-hmm. Where'd you learn to do that? Oh, I don't know. I guess the you know someone said we need more fighting people on this team, so now I, I can do fighting stuff. Man, oh man, did that look bad? Yeah, no, but oh, her the, the ghost vomit. Yeah, her ghost tapeworm. barfing thing. Yeah, I mean, it, not even just bad and like ew, gross, but the scene at the end where Ian McShane is a tapeworm. It like we hold on his face. For, it's got to be at least two or three minutes. Yeah. And he is just so poorly rendered, like, like just like stuttering around like yeah. a shitty PS2 graphic. Oh, man. It looked like the Scorpion King from I, Memory I, Returns. Yeah, I was going to say, when I was thinking about the level of graphics, it's the kind where you'd say, if this were a video game, whoa, dude, that's, that's pretty good for a video game. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's uh, very weird. Very, very weird. Uh, there's the whole Hellboy, I'm just a weapon. Mm-hmm. Halfway through the movie, it starts to complain about that. Yeah. little much of a too little too late thing. Whereas this is something in the originals that's always on the Ron Perlman character's mind all the time. Like, he's an, he wasn't even... He's, he's yeah, always yeah. lived under the premise of, yeah, I was born to be a fucking demon monster fighter thing. Right, and the other thing that made that more effective in the other ones is because he's a softy, it makes more sense that he's like, but I don't want to be a weapon. This Hellboy kind of seems like, whatever, man. Like, he seems like the kind who'd be, you know, sort of indifferent to that. Like, so it kind of felt out of nowhere. Also, don't you remember how, like, there was this cool element of, like, urban legendness around Hellboy? Like, he existed only in the BPRD, in the original yeah. Hellboy book or Hellboy movies. And, like, in the real world, he had to, like, you know, hide yeah. himself and he had to, like... Like Ninja Turtle style. Exactly. This one just, like, he's walking around London and he's walking around yeah. Tijuana and whatever. And it's whatever, but... How bad was that opening scene in the wrestling mat or the wrestling room? Thing? You know what? It was better than the, than the Pendle Hill scene before it, so I'll give it that. <laughs> it's not good. But, but the oh man that and it, he just kills the dude. Also, did he kill him by accident? Like what the hell happened? It was very weird. It's very weird physics. Like he threw him away, but he threw him and away then just and gets fell onto on him. the turnbuckle. Yeah, it was weird. Okay, very weird. sure. Oh, by uh, the way, blah blah. It's the end of something. Mm. All right, cool. <laughs> That's what I mean. It was just one of those things where I was saying in non spoilers, like there's so many things where. We need this one crucial line. It's like the Baba Yaga thing. Mm -hmm. Also, he didn't find the Baba Yaga. She just summoned him there. Mm. Yeah. Very weird. Yeah, it was was no bueno. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have much else to say about this movie. It sucked. It was was not good. Mm -hmm. Uh, As you said, there were a a couple action scenes that were all right. The Giants one was cool. The Graveyard one was meh. Mm Mm-hmm. This is what the lobs. I like the lobster Johnson thing. Yeah, it was all right. But overall, we can say that 
this is what uh, this is what Frank Reynolds would call a botch job. Yes, there is many studio fuckeries allegedly going oh, on. Oh yeah, in this I heard, and, and it kind of shows. It shows in spades. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of comes across, and the performances seem phoned in. There's scenes at, where at it's, time, in some scenes you feel like David Harbour's soul is leaving his body in certain scenes. Like, yeah, allegedly there was some strife between between him and the producers and the director Neil Marshall. I guess he allegedly wrote. Like wrote scenes, additional scenes for the movie in costume with Ian McShane in his trailer at certain points. Yeah, uh, there's a rumor that Neil Marshall had his go-to cinematographer fired off of the project beforehand by the producers as like a show of like, don't mess with us. This yeah. this is the kind of power we have. Again, this is all alleged. There was a huge <laughs> argument about a tree. I'd imagine it's the, the Pendle Hill tree uh, between the producers and the director, I think. It was like, there was an argument over whether or not they wanted the tree to look symmetrical or jagged Tim Burton-like. And it was like a multiple days long argument. So these are some of the things that are alleged. Some of them are too specific to think, they're bu- to think that are bullshit. So just you know, if you're a studio exec out there, just be nice. If you're if you're a director out there, be nice to your bosses, because nah, fuck that. Don't listen to anybody. Yeah, we watch shitty movies from now on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we're the ones that are suffering for it. I had to sit through two hours. I'm not really gonna get back. And while it's not it's not a complete piece of shit, it's not it, good. It, it it's not. It good is at all. though. I mean, it's it's not that bad. Like it's it's no, pretty fucking it, bad. I mean. It's it's the yeah, worst. It, it's not the worst comic book movie I've ever seen, but it's well, definitely the worst one the I've seen in a while. Third worst movie I've seen this year so far. But anyway, yeah. So let's move on to scores. Unless you've got any parting words. Goodbye, Hellboy. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry, Guillermo. Yeah. We wish you'd gotten that trilogy. Fuck. Any, any other closing remarks? No. All right, so I'm going to give this 1.5 out of 5. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. It's not very All right, good. yeah. So pretty low marks. Mm-hmm. That ends up being a... 5.5 out of 15. So not good. That'll do it for our review of Clifford the Big Red Demon in Demons Are People Too. <laughs> And now we move on to our review of Pet Cemetery. No, not the old one. No, not Pet Cemetery 2. The new one. Not the book either. Not the book, yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's go through our history. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll do it real quick. Scene 1, 2, haven't read the book. I've seen neither film and I haven't read the book. All right, so moving on to the review, this new one. So originally I was like a little whatever thought trailer looked kind of bland. Turns out I was pretty pleasantly surprised. Oh, yeah? This turned out to be a solid movie. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. I mean, well, you had a little higher expectations, I think. A little bit. I yeah. liked the cast a lot, and I liked the way it looked. And to be yeah. quite honest with you, I very much liked this movie until a point. Oh, the ending? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of there with you. Mm-hmm. So let's start off with the acting, though. Acting oh, yeah. is really strong in this. Pretty much on all fronts, especially from Jason Clark and uh, Amy Simetz. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but the uh, the couple that moved to this town in Maine with their two kids, uh, they do a great job. Uh, they both have a lot to work with, honestly. Uh, namely, Amy Simetz. She does a really good job. God, I hope I'm not fucking her name up. Yeah. But uh, you also get a great, you know, great little... It's a smaller role, sadly, but... John Lithgow, doing good stuff. You know, the thing is, he did good, but I was missing that accent, man. Yeah? I just, to me, Judd Crandall needs to be talking about going down that road. <laughs> yeah, son, that's the old haunted graveyard. Gotta be careful. Sometimes mm. dead is better. Yeah. <laughs> I was missing that a little bit. I just felt like this is just like, sometimes dead is better. Yeah. I mean, he, he, was, he was... You can't go in that forest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was good. It's yeah, just, he's good. I, I would say it was a good role. It, it was an okay Judd Crandall, though. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean... Uh, yeah, but the, the point is the acting was very good, and their characters came across very well through the acting, especially the mom and the dad have different viewpoints. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of, you know, I'm science guy. I believe in rational thinking, and the mom is a bit 
not like crazy religious or anything, but she's like, had some things happen to her that make her believe in weird things like yeah, ghosts she, and yeah. spirits and such. So you can see they're at odds with how they deal with the concept of death, mm-hmm. especially when the daughter asks about that. Yeah, and I think that one of the bigger, more, I guess we'll say, successful elements of this movie's setup is you have a really good moral dilemma at the center of this movie. And I think that's present in the, obviously, the Stephen King novel as well. And that's one of the things that really stuck out to me about this more than anything about the movie is, man, Stephen King just had some great ideas for stuff. This is a great idea for a movie and a great idea for a horror movie that's emotionally loaded and that gives a lot for actors in the movie to uh, work with besides just, yeah. I'm scared. It's or, like, oh yeah, shit. There's a monster after me. It's like, well, I've got a decision to make involving this magic place. Yes. And what is this pl- magic place? This pet cemetery, or not really the pet cemetery. Right. It's an interesting hypothetical. Yeah. Wh- what is it about? What is it about pet cemetery for those who are uninitiated? Oh, right. Since we've completely skipped over the plot. Okay. <laughs> for so. those who don't know. So Pet Cemetery is this magic place. It is a Native American burial ground where when you bury the dead in it, they come back to life. But there's a caveat. They come back and they're jerks. Mm-hmm. And but- by jerks, I mean they have a tendency to be evil. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, uh, fuck it. I mean, this it's sort of a spoiler, but not really. Well, the first usage of, of the Pet Cemetery isn't. Okay, it starts with the cat, and the yes. cat comes back a bit nasty. Church, the cat gets killed. They bring him back to spare the daughter. Uh, the grief of learning about the cat. Yes, exactly. And lo and behold, oh boy, Church is not the same. Church is not the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the fact that Church comes back not the same, but like in terms of you know how how intelligent he is for a cat. That's the same. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes this more... One thing really stuck out to me while watching this movie, I realized this is so much more interesting than zombies to me Mm -hmm. because zombies are unthinking. You come back evil, but you're still thinking from the pet cemetery. I think that's why it's such a cool concept in general. You're still a version of yourself. You're just the evil version of yourself. Which is, to me, far more scary. Yeah, and it feels a little bit more... A little bit, not real, but it just feels like a yeah. different sort of interpretation of zombies, which is is good. There isn't sort of this, you know, there isn't sort of this take on on the undead that exists as a, as prevalent as like the undead, brainless, brain eating zombies, you know. Right. But as I mentioned, while I think the tone, the atmosphere, and the acting is very good, and I think it leads to a very very morally interesting place, which we can't really talk about that yet, but. I think it does bring us to a place that is when this movie's in the meat of itself. That's when we're really we're really getting to the the heart of the entertainment value of this. And by entertainment, I mean the moral dilemma. However, oh boy, does this ending suck! <laughs> I, yeah, I got to be honest. It, I did not like it, especially when I found out the actual ending of the book. It is a diversion from the end of the book. Oh, it's, yeah. Okay, so I mean that's a semi non spoiler. Spoiler, but yes, there's a difference, uh, a major difference from the book. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a few huge differences overall. Yeah. And you're right, The first because the first third is the setup, and they really take their time-building atmosphere, which I thought was really well done. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird to build atmosphere with just a location and just the pet cemetery, but they do it really, really well. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of spooky stuff in there, too. Really well, that's, violent, gross things that happen as well that we that's can't the one thing really I, talk about. I felt like they kind of relied on other spooky shit that I felt like wasn't directly connected to the pet cemetery itself, but more to just the town it's in, mm-hmm. which I thought was a little bit of a cop-out, but I don't know. That might have been in the book, too. But What's with these truckers, man? These truckers got to get fucking, like, they got to get yeah. something going. They don't know how to fucking drive. Well, you know, they're, they're coming from Derry, apparently. That that would make sense. Easter Derry, egg yeah. time. There's yeah. a street sign that says Derry because that's where it is. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's in Maine, man. Maine's not as big of a state. Yeah, so Derry's... Derry exists. Yeah. 
But, but yeah, that's some material. Okay, so it starts off the spooky atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Then weird shit starts happening. And then there's the uses of the pet cemetery, mm-hmm. which that stuff's all good. But oh, then yeah. the, the, the third act slowly devolves. Well, first, what am I talking about? Slowly. It happens so fast. Third act is a little squished together. Yeah. It's a bit condensed. And in doing so, it's sort of. Uh, you had this interesting movie, as you said, with the moral dilemma. All the stuff that made it good, all of a sudden, kind of, kind of, what's the? It just sort of peters out into something kind it of fizzles. It, it fizzles into basically. Uh, I hate saying this because I and overall like the movie, but standard fare for mm-hmm. modern horror movies. Yeah, and it, more importantly, it was just like. A, not even just a downer of an ending. Like I felt like it tried to just be too shocking of an ending to be like, "Ooh, this will show the audience." Like that's not what the fuck I saw this for. Come on, man. <laughs> also, there's a way to do that, but in a better way. Yeah, like Jesus Christ, look at any Stephen King thing, The Shining, for fuck's sakes. Like that has a happyish ending, but it's not so much a happy ending. You know, it's it's got implications for the future. They made a fucking sequel about it. Yeah, but uh, it's. That's my huge problem, and I honestly say, like, well, Robert, what the fuck? You know, you think that the it's just a shitty ending. Like, what? What do you? What's the problem with that? Like, endings mean a big deal to me. If I leave the theater feeling bad, it's going to be hard for me to look back and be like, but the the first hundred nineteen minutes were good. But like, they covered the pet cemetery song. How could you leave ha- unhappy? Yeah, they cover the pet cemetery song right after uh, uh, the image of something really fucking bad yeah. and like that doesn't no, I go know. with it at all. I was like, well, wow, that, that's one eight hundred jarring as fuck. It, well, it's <laughs> funny you mention that because the first time I saw Pet Cemetery I was hanging out with some friends and we literally laughed our asses off when we heard that song because <laughs> it, it just totally kills anything that was scary Pun about. Intended. Yeah. Yeah, but like it literally, yes, it literally killed anything that was scary about the ending. And it so, doesn't bring it back to life. Right. <laughs> so yeah, as we said, the th- third act is kind of where I wouldn't say falls apart, but it, it's no, not. It's, it's still fine. It's not I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I was I was still there during the third act. It just I felt like story wise, it wasn't right exactly. Especially after reading the actual ending of this of the yeah. book, I was like, what was wrong with that? All right. <laughs> So, spoilers? Yeah, let's go. All right, right off the back, you know what scared the shit out of me the most? Hmm. That spinal shit. What's that? Oh, the... With the, the sister? sister? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that freaked me out. Yeah, that was weird, man. And what that, was going on in there? You know what? That's something I've always noticed about Stephen King, hmm. is he is a master at mixing real-life horrors with fantasy horrors, hmm. you hmm. know? Right. He... And that's what makes Pet Cemetery work, as we were saying, about setting up this town they're living in and this weird, creepy, you know, like, kind of off the beaten path, like, house in the middle of the boonies. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, of course there's a, a Native American burial ground here, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. And also, I- the look of the Native American burial ground was awesome. I kind of liked how it was more almost temple-ish. Dude, it was... Wait, you're talking about the... That was another thing I was going to say, is I like how the pet cemetery you see in the trailer, and I'm, again, I'm a newbie here. I haven't seen any of them already in the books, or any... I haven't read the book, but I like how the pet cemetery you see in the trailer isn't the actual pet yeah. cemetery. It's beyond that. It's beyond the deadfall that Judd Crandall left. It's Hold like on, a Robert. giant mountain. Yeah, or, sorry, you were saying, yeah, giant no, mountain. No, it's a giant mountain, and it's like fog everywhere, and like, that was another thing, like... Obviously, getting a little bit ahead of myself, but the scene where he brings the daughter up there, yeah, and buries her, like he's like walking through the fog and there's fucking lightning and shit, and wolves are howling, Wendigo's howling. He's got this his dead daughter in his yeah. hands in a flowing white dress. I'm like, this feels like a fucking like Wagner opera. Like this feels like some crazy ass. Like, That's what I mean. The, the, it felt. It, I loved all. Of it, it wasn't just you know. There's some weird ghost thing, and then jumps, like, whatever. It was was atmospherically creepy. It was atmospherically creepy, and they had a good setting. Yes, it looked really good, and I liked all of that. Yeah. So, But hold on. Are you telling me that the trailer didn't give away everything? I know, right? Oh, I know. What a shock. It's weird. Okay, let's talk about the daughter being the one dying instead of the little kid. That's the biggest change they made. Well, one of the biggest changes they make in this. So, Okay. That initially had you a little worried. Well, my initial thought was, again, mixing the real life with the fantasy horror. 
what makes the idea of pet cemetery so freaky to me is it, it's more like disturbing that it'd be like the little toddler mm-hmm. who's coming back from the dead. And there's more of a mo- inherent moral dilemma because like the kid can barely talk. Whereas like with, I think with this one, she's vocalizing everything like, fuck you. I hate you. You, you killed me. Blah, blah, blah. Whereas like but the what, toddler yeah. would have just been like, well, see that to say yeah. monosyllabic shit, you know? Yeah. Whereas, like, the cussing girl, it's like, fuck you, bitch. Like, yeah. <laughs> I want to kill you. Yeah. Whereas the kid, it's like, I want to kill him because I don't want to get killed, but he's a baby. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it's mm-hmm. like. Stephen King loves to tap into the, like, how can I make this situation as uncomfortable as possible? Right. You know? But honestly, I I kind of, as much as I'm normally against, Ooh, what's your take? Mm-hmm. I kind of, I found this enjoyable because. Yeah. Overall, it works. Because the difference is, similar to what I was saying about zombies, hmm. now you have a kid who's a little bit older and understands a little bit more. And it makes for some great scenes, like the back and forth scenes between her and Jason Clark, where she's like, I'm dead, aren't I? Yeah. Like, this is weird. It's it's yeah. good, good weird. It's like, this is a weird conversation. Yeah, to it's, have. A, it's, a cr- it's way more creepy, especially because... They had gone through that discussion Mm -hmm. and, you know, the dad said one thing, the mom said another. So she was kind of mixed up about what was she really like? She's at that phase where she's what, like eight, nine, ten ish ish. Yeah. So you're right at that age where you're a little, you know, you're like your cognitive abilities are are a little more advanced than obviously a a two, three year old, you know. Shout out to the girl for playing that role. It's not an easy role. And did you get a sense that like. Her performance as the undead child was actually better than playing a normal little girl. A little bit. <laughs> it just no, felt, be, you it know felt like it, she was trying to play natural a little bit too much as a, as a little girl. But yeah. when, she, when she flipped on the switch to being evil, I'm like, I buy it. Well, that's what I'm saying is because she's a little bit older and like, mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're a little more like mentally there when you're 10. That made for all, a different type of creepy, mm-hmm. which again, normally I, at first I wasn't a fan of. But it, it made her a more, uh, what's the, like, sort of more formidable villain. Cause yeah, she's, there's more to she's her. Not, yeah, exactly. There's more to her, mm. which in turn, it's kind of like her evil persona has more of a reason to be pissed off at her parents. Mm, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, I get that. I get that sense. Because it seems like the Pet cemetery obviously has some pull on your personality, but you're still you. Right, right. You still have your memories and imprinted yeah. ideas and such. Here's an interesting question I have for you. So in the beginning, Victor Pascal, the the boy, the poor kid that gets killed in that yeah. car accident, he gets hit by a car and he like I'm assuming like skids across the pavement and like we can see like his brain and shit. Yeah. So <laughs> when Ellie Creed gets hit by a she gets cleaned by a oh fucking Oh my god, tanker, yeah, I've heard this. Whatever, man. She's like just like oh like I'm just oh I I was knocked over. It's like dude, no, she'd be a smear. Come on, man. Like you're <laughs> like I would have rather them not shown it. Wouldn't that have been more powerful? Like we just see a reaction shot a, of like you don't get a real good look. But there's like no blood, and I'm to believe yeah. that some motherfucker gets hit by a car, and all of a sudden his brain is showing, and she gets well, fucking. The tanker does skid. It could have just been at the end of its skid, and it's just like doink. She got fucking <laughs> depleted by it. I'm like, damn, she. She'd well, I mean, fucking even a wreck. small, even a small doink. Yeah, I'm not. A, would, I'm not. Would deplete. I'm not a big. You know, I'm not saying yeah. I want to see a bloody dead body of a of a little girl. But you know, one of the things about Hereditary that spoilers for Hereditary, I guess, that made it so like not fucking around is they show us a decapitated little girl in the first like ten minute or twenty minutes of the movie. So you're like, all right, got it. <laughs> this is what I'm dealing with, and it would have yeah. it would have made the tone that much more dour, which is right. what I liked. I'm like, fuck, I love that Stephen King and the filmmakers rather are, are plunging me into this fucking muck of morality. Like, fuck, what is going to happen? Yeah. So I think that added element of Jesus Christ, she is dead. Yeah. Like, she's fucking dead. Would have been would have made for that much more of a punch because that that was what I was doing the whole movie. Is I already knew what was going to yeah. happen because everybody knows that. And I was just dreading it. I'm like, I know where this is going. Yeah. I don't like it. Well, um, see, you know, is in perfect line with Stephen King. I don't know if this is in the novel, but on her birthday too. Oh God, man, <laughs> Alexander and the horrible, rotten, no good day. Move over. We've got a new winner. Yeah, Jesus Christ. It's called First, LA. my cat runs away and scratches me, and then a tanker truck just kills me. <laughs> 
What a drag. Uh, All right, children's publishers or whatever the fuck. Get we, on we, it. Yeah, we got a new kids book. It's going to be hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to be a real real uh page turner. Page turner. It's going to be a new <laughs> New York Times bestseller. Yeah. Anyway, oh, uh what was I going to say? Oh yeah, the dude Jason Clark. Mm-hmm. Whatever. What's the hell are their names? Creed? Creed. Some? Lewis Creed. Creed, yeah. Creed, yeah. Two okay. movies with Creed that we've seen recently. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Lewis Creed. Uh, I like how when he finally realizes it works, mm-hmm. he just kind of throws out everything he had thought out the window and just descends into madness. Oh, yeah. Which I kind of liked because I, I thought, all right, so when he gets killed, I don't have to feel bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He right. does He does realize he makes a mistake, but at that point, yeah. it's too late. But it's so crazy as he becomes a bastard to his family, feel mm-hmm. bad for Gage and the, the wife. The wife, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a cautionary tale, Alex. Don't go to Native American burial grounds and try and reanimate the dead bodies of your cat and or daughter. As they say, sometimes they say. dead is better. Sometimes it is. Yeah. You know what part was also creepy as hell? Hmm. When he's brushing the hair and, and it gets snagged on the staples. Yeah, from the, uh, what do you call it, the mortician or whatever, like, yeah. trying to put her back together. What was that? J- just just a snag. Yeah. Oof. That, that was another one of those things where you you felt there's, so, like, you felt more of a presence. Mm-hmm. Because, again, she's like, I'm dead, aren't I? Mm-hmm. You're right. There's something just extra sinister about those scenes. It's sinister and just like, oh, man, it was really weird. Like, weird, like off-putting in a good way. You're yeah. like, oh, man, I, I don't like yeah. this. <laughs> All right, so you want to just skip ahead to the third act? Yeah. So so things are pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Then the family gets back. Yeah. And they just, they, oh. they all die. Yeah, but it, 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 <laughs> what, what literally makes no sense about it uh, is... It feels too quick. It feels too quick, but there's also a part that's like, there's something that happens that's real, real dumb. Okay, so the Ellie's finally gone batshit crazy. She's go, gotten all stab happy with the knife. Right. Uh, kills the mom. Throw uh, she, but manages to throw what's his name out the wind. Not like throw him, but drop him down. Toss him to, down. Yeah. Yeah, just a nice baby toss. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like you do it's with like your a, kids. Like a carny, like, ah, toss the baby. <laughs> uh, Land on the arms, do no harm. Yeah. Step right up. Anyway. Oh, man. So she carny tosses the baby down, mm-hmm. and he carny catches the baby. Yes. So in the arms, no harms. Yes. Uh, then what the hell? He, like, goes back inside or something? He goes to uh, Judd's house. He, he puts, the, puts the kid in the car, and then he goes to Judd's house. Yeah. Right? To see what's up, what's what, and then he sees that he's dead. Oh, yeah. Judd get Okay, the Judd getting killed scene was pretty much pretty much on par with how it happens in the first, movie. first movie. Mm-hmm. And I think the book. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so after that all goes awry, and then the, the house is just having a about a shenanigans going, going down. Uh, so... She eventually buries the mom in the graveyard. So they come back. Very fast, yeah. by the way. What is so completely, utterly pointless is, well, okay, we're going to or we're gonna knock you out. Not kill you, just knock you unconscious. Mm-hmm. So you can wake up in the graveyard to have an extra chance to escape. But then not. But then not, because we're going to kill you, and we're going to bury you here. It just felt like... Uh, a, an excuse to have the climactic scene take place in the graveyard. And then also... Which they could have set up, but, like, why would you have it where they have him dead to rights in the house? We're only going to knock you out to take you to this graveyard that's for resurrecting people. It felt so dumb. Oh, shit, he's getting away. Kill him. Ah, damn. Yeah, finally, we got him. You know what we should do while we're here? I'm just saying, for convenience sake, while we're here, <laughs> we might as well resurrect him. Okay. Yeah. And then... No, they, I, they, you know what I mean? It just it they felt do. stupid. They do do that. And then a uh, two-year-old baby burns to death. What are you talking about? That's what happens at the end of the movie. Oh, yeah. No, he walks up to the car, right? With a, can- with a gas canister in his hand, implying that they're going to kill the baby, right? Or maybe he's going to channel the ghost of Victor. I don't know. 
Yeah. I don't want to be buried in Pet Cemetery. Don't you like this movie? How that that juxtaposes like this, this little. Be you mean the the weird Liz Fair version? That's what it sounded like. This I, little, I don't know who. It's like who, the last shot of that. That really just like I don't know why it pissed me off. And I'm not one of these think of the children Roger Ebert types, but like the last shot of this movie is like. A, a two-year-old infant child watching his dead family walk up to him with a gas canister. That's usually a little easier to stomach when it's, like, the counselor at the... Well, spoilers! If you haven't seen Friday the 13th, it's over 30 years old. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you know, Jason jumps out of the lake. Yeah, yeah. Also worth mentioning, she doesn't die. Well, but, yeah, but true. Spoilers for Friday the 13th Part 2, sorry, but it's also about 30 years old. Yeah, so get, get the fucking times. But yeah, yeah. I just feel like cutting from that to that song, it's like... Are you fucking kidding me? Like, Wasn't that a fun movie? Yeah, come on, guys. Give us some money for the sequel. It's, uh, it, yeah. it's not It's not bad. Not a bad yeah, movie. Yeah. But it, god damn, was that a woefully unforgiving the, well, You know what the other thing is? <laughs> what we've just described about the whole like killing Judd, the house, that's all in the span of maybe less ten than minutes. ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's very quick, and it all kind of comes to a very quick and Because this movie takes stop. its time to set up. It's a slow burn. And I like that. I like when this movie was more of a cerebral, you know, romp through. Should I fucking bring my dead daughter yeah. back to life or not? And there was all, and there's also the whole idea with you know the victor and the mom's hallucinations getting worse about her sister, about how it was this Indian burial ground has ripple effects on this entire town. That was a little unclear to me. Well, see, I mean, it was cool, but it was. A little bit, but I kind of got that sense. But it was, it definitely felt like it, where it's like there's something wrong with this town. Yeah, that's the but other thing. Is it, that's why I'm saying it, it sort like as much as it was kind of cool, the fact that they gloss over it so you know so uh, it's just not explained as much. You that's know? what I mean. Because like just, with it, it's like it's a thing. It's yeah. a creature doing yeah. this. But with with pet cemetery, it's like it's this a town piece is of weird. land. Yeah. It's like get. It's yeah, land doing But this. then there, it does, like, other things. I'm saying some of that stuff was cool on its yeah. own right, but I I don't... I mean, you don't need to over-explain it, but they just barely gloss over it. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Uh, also, I was, I was glad that... Because this is the part in the trailer where I thought, this is stupid. I hope this doesn't make its way in mm -hmm. too much. The kids with their dumb little drums. Yeah, it's kind of a red herring. Yeah, it was a huge red herring, and honestly, that whole pet cemetery, the proper pet cemetery, was a red herring. It's yeah, like, and that's what I liked. I'm like, oh, that's not the actual pet cemetery. And I, I was glad that the dumb kids and the unscary animal masks was not mm -hmm. part of it. Right, right. So, despite the third act being a little loosey, loosey goosey slash mm -hmm. meh, I thought it was still pretty solid. All right, so moving along to scores, I'm gonna give this a three point five out of five. I'm not too much further below you. I'm, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Bringing us to a grand total of 9.5 out of 15, which is all right. Yeah. So that'll do it for our review of Dead People Smell Bad. Thank you for listening to Bonus Features with Alex and Robert. I'm Alex. And I'm Robert. If you want to keep up to date with our latest episodes, clips, and reviews, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bonus Features with Alex and Robert, as well as our Facebook page, which is also, once again, Bonus Features with Alex and Robert. Got questions, qualms, concerns, or suggestions? Let us know by leaving a comment. As always, till next time.